Hello, my friends. Perlo Wisdom here from my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we have been doing some killer trade talk videos throughout the hockey season. Last one being uh, Malkin. And no, sorry, JT Miller. We did a JT Miller one. You might want to check that one out. And now we're going to look at another trade video uh, based on an article that... Uh, references Elliot Friedman and Chicago Blackhawks. Very interesting indeed. Chicago Blackhawks have made a statement that there are three players that are not available. And basically the rest of their team is available. At least they're willing to listen anyways. And the first thing I saw when I went on the Twitter there is everybody talking about, not everybody, everybody, but a lot of people talking about to brink at. Chicago fans are like, what, you're going to trade Dabrinkat? And, well, they did not not say Dabrinkat, as we'll see in the article. So today, we're going to trade Dabrinkat. Sure, why not? Uh, I was surprised, too. I thought for sure Dabrinkat would be, like, completely off the table right away. Like, no way, right? But he's not. Now, that being said... I went and quickly looked. We're going to look. I picked some teams that would maybe be a, the best fit for Dabrinkat because I think every team's going to be calling if Dabrinkat's available. Now, when I looked at it, though, and I have only looked at it a very small amount, I, I do some research, but I'm not going to go like heavy into it. I like to do this one take, go through it, boom, my reaction to who you would get for Dabrinkat. Now, we're going to look at a trade that happened at the trade deadline that might give us an idea of what we would have to give up for Dabrinkat. I think it's going to be a heck of a lot. And I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I'd love to have Dabrinkat. And then when I say how much it's going to cost, they're going to be like, yeah, maybe not so much. But maybe not. Tell me in the comment section what you think. What would you, would you give up for Dabrinkat for your team? And uh, what do you value on a player like that? We're going to look at to bring at what his numbers were, how old he is, what his contract is, all of those sort of things like that. And then we'll look at the teams that I came up with. Tell me in the comment section if there's teams that I didn't, if I missed or you want to talk about. I'd love to talk about it. NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. I do that from time to time. Check it out. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. All right. Let's take a look at the article first. This is from the Hockey Writers, Inc. And it says, as per Elliot Freeman, don't, uh, don't expect the Blackhawks to be talking much to other teams about Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, and Seth Jones, all of whom have no trade clauses. He says they aren't on the market. Okay. He probably is one a general manager that is uh, not going to ask people to, you know, once they make a no trade, if they come and talk to them about it, fine. But otherwise, they're not going anywhere. But he notes that almost everyone else on the Blackhawks roster is. But other than the Blackhawks, other than that, the Blackhawks are testing the value of anyone that other teams want to ask about. They're willing to listen. They're willing to hear. As a GM, as another GM said, it's like Brandon Hagel. Can you make them an offer that makes them want to seriously think about it? And we're gonna look at we're gonna look at uh, Brandon Hagel and his contract, uh, his tr that trade, and see how that maybe might apply to what's going to happen with the Brinkat if he's available at all. But it sounds like he is. First of all, let's look at that. Brandon Hagel, what was that deal? I was at the trade deadline, okay? Brandon Hagel is nowhere near as good as Dabrinkat, and I'll tell you that right now. He's good. He's a good, you know, 5'6 uh, kind of guy, or like a third line, second line tweener. Probably gets you about 40-some points a season. Maybe 50 on a really good year. Can play two-way. And they gave up. Two very good prospects in Boris Kachuk and Tyler Radish that are older and ready to play right now. A first-round pick in 2023, one of the deepest drafts we've seen since 2015. 
and a 20, 2024 uh, top top ten protected for Hagel. Two first round picks. The Lightning also receive a fourth round pick in 2022. <clears throat> Let me tell you, that is a huge haul. Now, Brandon Hagel had a very reasonable contract. Million dollars, million point two. He was definitely had a contract that was great value for what he is. But this is a crap load to give up. We're going to look at this as a template for Debrinkat. Now, you think about this for a second before you, you know, I, I know you got bells off going off in your head. I'd love to have Debrinkat, and we'll see why in a second. Actually, we'll go over there right now. To bring out right here. Okay, why do we want to bring out? We want to bring out because he's a 41 goal scorer. He's only 23 years old. He's only making six million at the moment, but he's going to have to be resigned after next season. At a minimum of around 7.2. Okay. In which case you can give him a long contract. You can give him a bridge. Until he's an unrestricted free agent. But the dude rocked it last year. 41 goals. He's been getting better every single year. He's got an insane shot. There's a very good chance. This guy becomes a 50 goal scorer. Especially on a much better team. Some disadvantages. He's only 5'7". Now, I don't know if you watch Chicago or not, but I don't really notice that this kid's only 5'7". He plays the type of game where he just knows how to use his size, and he's got a low center of gravity. He doesn't seem to back down from anyone. I don't see it as a big detriment that he is 5'7", especially when you're possibly looking at a 50-goal scorer. Okay, he's 24 years old. And that's the only detriment I see. He's actually really... Uh, he's not bad defensively. Unfortunately, he's learned how to play defense from Kane, Patrick Kane, which is not a great person to learn from because he is absolutely diabolically bad defensively. So I think you can work in that area with him. But his offense makes up for any defensive deficiencies he may have. So you just heard Hagel. A first in 2023 and a first in 2024. Now, more than likely late first, but that 2023 first, even as a late first, is like getting a middle first. It is that deep of a draft. Very, very deep. Like, for instance, in this draft in 2022, a late first is like basically what 2000, in 2023 will be like a late second. It's not a very deep draft. So you see what I'm saying? And they gave up two prospects in Kachuk and, uh, what did they say there again? And Tyler, Taylor Radish that aren't bad. They're, they're probably going to be fourth, third line guys, but still good, solid prospects. So what are we asking for and who's good? Where might he go? What teams might want to look at it? We're going to look at that right now. And this is kind of like from the least likely to the most likely sort of. Calgary. I think Calgary, and the reason why I put Calgary on the list here right away is because they're going to have cap space. Uh, probably. It almost, I was listening to Sirius Radio. I don't know if you guys do. By the way, Calgary fans, if you're listening, sub up. We do this contract, this kind of uh, content all the time, and I'd like you to be able to comment in the comment section. I was listening to Sirius Radio, and I've heard it from a, It's almost like a foregone conclusion that Johnny Goudreau is going to Philadelphia. I don't get it for Philadelphia, honestly. I'm in the East. Philadelphia is, is my team, and uh, I don't get it. I don't know why they would do that. $10 million a year. I can get into that some other time. I really don't understand why Calgary's not going to give him the $10 million. Maybe he's not saying so, but really wants to go home. It's hard to say. But if it does happen... Calgary has a choice to make. Are we going to continue trying to pretend we're a cup contender? Which I think they're sort of in the pretending side, but it doesn't matter. Are we going to try to keep on being a cup contender? Or are we going to start to retool this thing? Because the other one they got to sign is Matthew Chuck. 
I've heard he wants to get, he, does, he doesn't want to sign a long-term contract, which is scary in itself. Um, they could really change things up here a lot. They could trade Kachuk. They could do all kinds of stuff to change this whole lineup around. But if Johnny Goudreau is going to, go, is going to be gone, and Dabrinkit's on the market, why not bring in a 40 to 50 goal scorer that's four years younger than Goudreau and makes $4 million less at the moment, and probably will in his next contract as well? Uh, so uh, it just made sense to me that if they're going to keep on trying to be cup contenders with this team, that a guy like Dabrinka could fill that role on the right side. Kachuk could play left, Lindholm, bring in Dabrinka at a 50, 50 goal score to play on that line and keep on rolling with what you got and see if you can do something with this lineup. I look at this lineup, I don't see a cup contender, but. Calgary fans, you tell me what you think. But if you're going to say that you are, this is something I think if you lose Goudreau, they have to strongly consider doing. Problem is, what do you give up? I'll tell you right now, Pelche is gone, gone, gone. If I'm Chicago, I'm taking the best prospects you got for this guy. We're talking about Dabrinkat here. This is, Hagel got two first and two decent prospects. Dabrinkat's going to get extremely good prospects. And, yeah, for sure, your first is gone. Does Calgary even have their first? Oh, they don't even have their first. So your 2023 first is gone, too, in this deal. See ya. Pelche. Whoops. Pelche, for sure gone. Uh, And your first round pick. At least, and that's not going to be it. Don't don't even think that that's going to be it. Like, maybe you got to trade Mangio Pani in here. I think that's defeating the whole purpose of getting him, though. I would not want to trade Mangio Pani in this. You got to keep him, I would say. So, I I go Dubé, Pelche, a first, and you know you might as well go. You might as well go Connor Zari. Uh, they don't really have much for defensemen to give up. So Connor Zari, that's the kind of package we're talking about here for Dubrincat. Dubé, Pelche, Zari, first. That would probably do it. Maybe. When you look at what Hegel got and you look at the type of play we're talking about here, I don't think Chicago doesn't have to trade him. You don't give them something that's going to blow their mind. They're going to be like, yeah, whatever. We'll keep them. That's okay. If you want them, I just think that Calgary may be so driven to keep going here after uh, after uh, Johnny Hockey leaves that possibly they could make this deal. Do I think it's a good idea? No, I don't think it's a good idea. I wouldn't do it myself. I would keep the prospects they have and actually would be looking to build, keep on building this team rather than keep pretending that you're a contender when you're not. Sorry, Calgary fans, Flames fans. I know you're going to just, uh, there's a lot of people are going to disagree with me. I talk to Homer fans constantly all the time doing this. And uh, yeah, everybody loves to think that their team is a contender. You're not. Calgary's not a contender. I don't believe they are. Tell me in the comment section if you think you are. L.A. Kings. Now, here's a team that's bordering on being a contender, I think, at least in the next couple of years. They've built up a ton of great picks, great prospects. Uh, Arthur Kaliev, Rasmus Kupari. Uh, Adrian Kempe is coming out at 25 years old. He's a 35-goal scorer. And they have more coming up, of course, five field. They have Velarde that's not even working in their lineup right now. He would probably be part of this deal. Doesn't have the hugest value right now because he hasn't been able to solidify spot. I think he's kind of disgruntled with the organization. And uh, so I imagine he would definitely be part of this deal. They have Alex Turcotte, Jared Dolan, Anderson, Fagimo. I think that's how you say it. Hey, Fagimo? Is it Fagimo? Uh, Jordan Spence, tons of talent coming in here. Okay. Do you want to bring out LA Kings fans? Comment in the comment section. Sub yourself up to my YouTube channel so you can be part of this content on a regular basis and you can comment and tell me what you think here. But 
I just showed you that Hagel got two firsts and two decent prospects from Tampa Bay. Now, that was at the deadline, I understand, but it doesn't matter. Chicago doesn't need to trade Dabrinkat. And if you haven't watched this whole video, go watch it and explain why Dabrinkat could be on the market. But I follow, I don't, I'm not a big I follow fan. I follow where Trevor Moore is going to be in there. And you're going to say, well, I would rather it be. You know, Chicago doesn't care who you'd rather it be. Chicago has holds all the cards here. If you want a 50, a possible 50 goal score on this lineup right now, it's going to cost you Trevor Moore, Rasmus Kupari, and or Kaliev. Assuming you don't think Kaliev is a 50 goal scorer, maybe it's maybe that's who it is. He's 20 years old. I don't know if he's ever going to be a 50 goal scorer. I love his size and I love his talent. Do you love it more than a 50 goal scorer on this lineup to play with Kopitar right now? It's up to you. I don't know. We'll try to we'll try to do it without him. Let's put it that way. But more Rasmus Kupari, your first this year, Sean Dursey. More Rasmus Kupari, your first this year, and Sean Dursey. You've still got Spence coming up. Oh, Gabriel Velarde, maybe. Uh, let's say Velarde instead of more. So you can keep more. I think they would do that. Velarde, Kupari, first, and Sean Dursey. Chicago might be interested in a package like that. Might be. I wouldn't even know if, it depends how much they like Dursey. Uh, they don't, like I said, they don't need to trade this player. You got to want him so bad that you're willing to give him a really, really good package to take him. And I think LA may strongly consider even a deal like this because they did make it to the playoffs this year. They said that the rebuild, they have said that the rebuild is over. You'd still have Kaliev in the lineup. You still have Byfield in the lineup. You'd still have Jordan Spence coming up. You still got Dolan Anderson coming up. You still got a lot of great players to add into this lineup. You still they have tons of youth to still be able to come up and play in the near future. Allard. Alex Turcott, right? So what do you think? You're gonna give up that much for a guy who's a 40 goal scorer? He's a small 40 goal scorer, but he doesn't look like a small. He doesn't play like a small 40 goal score. I know I, I heard it from you. Oh, you know, I would love to have Dabrinkat. And uh, now how much would you love to have Dabrinkat LA? Would you do that deal? Tell me in the comment section. Okay, next. Nashville Predators. Uh, I think Nashville would be in on this for a lot of reasons. They don't want to actually do a rebuild, I don't think. It's just the market is not set up well to financially be able to absorb a rebuild that they probably need to do. So how do you, as a general manager, you got to figure out a way you can kind of rebuild and still be competitive. It's, 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 it's actually not a good way to rebuild. You end up being a bubble team, which is pretty much what Nashville is. A bubble team is a team that just barely makes the playoffs or not. Apparently, also, these last playoffs, Nashville didn't even fill the building. It's almost like the shine is coming off this team. So, an exciting, fast, crazy player like to bring that, I think would add a lot of value to this franchise. But problem is, what are you going to give up? If I'm Chicago, what do I want off this lineup? Uh, I, 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 I want Chicago. This is a 24-year-old possible 40, regular 40-goal 40 scorer. I don't want Granlin. I don't want Duchesne. I don't want Ryan Johansson. There's no need for me to take any one of those guys. If I were to take one of those guys in this deal, I would actually be more doing Nashville a favor than myself. Because I don't really need those guys in my in, in my lineup. So let's say, for instance, I decided, okay, I'll do you a favor. I'll take Ryan Johansson off your hands. So you can have more cap room to have a guy like Dabrinka. I don't, or maybe get a different center or whatever the case may be. I want everybody else. I want Tomasino. Tomasino, for sure. I love that guy. 32 points, 20-year-old. 
Tomasino's coming my way. I, I want Tanner Janot. Uh, I don't even know. I, I like. I would be killing for Tanner Janot. I don't think you could rip Tanner Janot out of Nashville even with the brink at belt. So we're gonna go. I mean, he's just loved by the fans too much. There, he's got too much fan value and just value for your team. If I could get my hands on him on any team, I would be trying to get him as much as I possibly could. I just love him. He's a playoff type guy. I'd want him for sure. But Tamasino, for sure. I like. I want Alexander Carrier, for sure. First round pick, for sure. And probably a prospect of some kind on top of that. Uh, I'll take Luke Prokop. I like Luke Prokop. We'll go with Luke Prokop. That's the kind of package that's going to have to be to get a guy like the Brinkat in Nashville. Do I do that if I'm Nashville? Uh, it's hard to say. Logically, I say no, because this team should be rebuilding. If, if you're not going to rebuild and you kind of want to still be younger, I guess you make the deal. If you want to bring fans to the building with an exciting guy that can score 50 goals, I guess you make the deal. And then you just got to hope the heck you hit low on your draft picks like crazy to fill out this roster. Uh, you got you gave up Ryan Johansson. That, that'll give you a couple million to add another piece and get, keep going. I mean, with this deal, is Nashville a contender? No. But without the steel, Nashville's not a contender either. So how are you going to become a contender? I don't know. The only way I know how to become a contender when you have a roster like this is you trade everybody away and you do what Detroit's doing. Doesn't seem like Nashville's going to do that. You're in a tough spot there, Nashville. Tell me what you think in the bottom. Would you do that for a guy like the Brink out there in Nashville? Nashville fans. Sub yourself up, boy! Look at this one, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yes, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who I who we just talked about with Brandon Hagel. Debrinkat can play right or left side here. Okay, so you're saying we have no cap space, obviously. No doubt about it, you have no cap space. So in this deal, you're going to have to create cap space. Here's what I say. They get to keep Palat. They trade Kalorin in this deal. And I know you're all going to boo. But if you want a 24-year-old 40-goal scorer to add to this lineup, Sergachev. Mikhail Sergachev, whom they are going to have to sign next year. And I can promise you this right now. Sergachev is not going to settle for, he's in the 5-6 spot with Ryan McDonough, okay? Now, I think more than likely they would trade Ryan McDonough before M M Mikhail Sergachev. Sergachev's going to want top pairing money, simple as that. I mean, if I'm his agent, I'm telling Tampa Bay right now, you have a, you just have the luxury of having a Sergachev in your bottom pairing up until now. We're not going to get paid like a bottom pairing defenseman. We want top pairing money. If that's the case, he's going to be the highest paid defenseman on the team. Now, they have they can give him a bridge and there's not much he can do about it, although I do think he has arbitration rights. But even then, it's going to be $6 million and it's only going to be on a short-term deal. Okay? Because it's going to be on a bridge deal. Because he ain't signing long term for anything under $8 million. There's no way. I, if I'm Sergeyev, there's no way I'm signing that. No chance. So if he does, great, beautiful. I mean, I wouldn't advise it. I certainly, if he was my son, I'd be like, what are you doing? Don't throw that kind of money out there. Uh, don't, call, don't throw that money out on the table. Uh, you know, you got a family to take care of. You got families to take care of. You got me to take care of, for the love of God. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you might have to give them up anyways. If you got a Debrinkat, a 40-goal scorer, you can move, uh, you can start using Cal Foot more, although he's a right defenseman. 
if it goes, you can move to the left. You can fill in that luxury third pairing spot with a different defenseman. And you get a 24-year-old 40-goal scorer who won't be need to get paid for a couple of years. That's the only reason why I do this. Uh, you you know, Kalorn's in the deal. So you, you might, in this way, you'd be able to stay under the cap. You'd be able to get under the cap, get a 24 goal or uh, a 50 goal score to play with points when he comes back. He's small, no doubt about it. He's a small player, but he's a 40 goal scorer. Tough, 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 tough. In all honesty, I think what would end up happening is Ryan McDonald will be moved and Sergeyev will move up there. But I was asked about Tampa Bay. I did a, I did a thing on Tampa Bay. I don't see any other. If you're a Tampa Bay, Bay fan, give me another offer. Maybe you look at Anthony Sorelli. Put, give Anthony Sorelli in the deal and Alex Kaloran. Paul can be your second line winger. And, uh, you know, the uh, Chicago gets a second line center. Kaloran, if you don't have first round picks, maybe Cal Foot. Like, that's the kind of package we're talking about for a 24-year-old 40-goal scorer. Sorelli, Kalorn, Cal Foot. if you're getting cap space here, they're going to want Cal Foot for sure. Uh, you, gave up, they gave, you gave up your first-round pick, so you're not likely going to be able to get that. Do you really need Sorelli with point there? Uh, Kalorn, they could probably turn him into somebody else. They don't really need it, but they would value somebody like Sorelli, who is a little cheaper. And if you, they can get Cal Foot too and maybe some other prospects, you might be able to swing it in Tampa. Maybe. Tell me what you think, Tampa Bay fans. Uh, would I do that? I, I'm not even sure if I would do that. I'm not sure. Help me out. Ottawa Senators. Well, the Ottawa Senators, it, it, they have mentioned, and I did it, and I showed it in my previous video when I was talking about JT Miller because the Ottawa Senators were part of that deal. They want to add a top six. Do they want to add a significant top six like to brink at? I'm sure they would. But do they want to give up what they're going to need to give up to get them? That I don't know. Because I think it's going to take a crap load. It's going to take Pinto. It's going to take... I mean, you would have, if you were to include Drake Batherson in the deal, you wouldn't have to give up much past Batherson, I think. Batherson and Pinto or Batherson and Zub or something like that. I, I think you, you, you know, maybe you value Batherson, Batherson as much as you would value a 40-goal scorer like to bring that. I don't know. In which case, you wouldn't do that deal at all, right? If you're, an auto, if you, if you're Ottawa. But I don't think Brown is going to do it. I think Formington could be part of the deal. Formington, for sure Pinto. I want Pinto all day if I'm giving you a guy like the Brinka. And then I think you're looking at some extremely good prospects like Ripley Gregg. And, of course, if you were to throw Jake Sanderson in there, that might do it straight up right there. But I, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I wouldn't. It's too hard to find defensemen like Jake Sanderson out there. So I'm probably not doing that. I would do Lassie Thompson, though. So let's do Thompson or like Mark Kostelik, who plays with uh, and Sanderson. But let's do Thompson. Pinto, Formington, and your first in a weak draft. This is a weak draft, remember. The seventh overall is not a very strong draft. That's a lot. But you're talking about Dabrinkat. What 50-goal score do you have here? Do you, do you have a 50-goal score in this lineup? Like, he hasn't scored 50 yet, but he scored 41, and he's only 24 years old. And if he's playing with a guy like Tim Stutzla, he can play left or right. Like, he brings so much to a lineup. It is absolutely insane. Um, that's the goal score, I think, that uh, you're looking at, looking for. Now, Brady Kachuk, may, I think Brady Kachuk might pop 50 one day. He's 22 years old. But Kachuk, Norris, Batherson, Dabrinkat, Stutzla, 
and like say Colin White or who or some other young players that are coming up in which Ottawa should have a ton. Uh, Castellic, no, okay, maybe not. But oh, that's minors uh, prospects. I know they do. Oliver Johansson, he's 18 years old, drafted in 19. So, you know, Clevin was the guy I was talking about. That's the other defenseman that you could put. Is Clevin? Clevin is the one that played with Sanderson. Sorry about that. Not Castellic. Castellic is a fourth line guy that's coming up in the coming up in the the. Uh, or you, you know, you got three. You could put Philip Gustafson in that deal too. That's not a bad idea. Throw Philip Gustafson in there. And because uh, Chicago doesn't have a goaltender. So maybe you could do that instead of Lassie Thompson. That would be huge. But that's the kind of package we're talking about for a guy like him. And I know maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Chicago values that number seven pick more than I'm saying. Personally, uh, at number seven there, there's not really any superstars available. Uh, they could be very good players. You might get catch lightning in a bottle. But it's not the most enticing draft this year. So that number, that's the reason why Ottawa is offering it up. If it was like 2023, you're not touching that seventh pick. No way. Ottawa is not giving up that seventh pick next year if they, ha if they happen to be in that spot. Not a chance. This year? Yeah, okay. Let's take a look at that. Anyways, tell me what you think, Ottawa Senators fans. Would you do a deal like that? I'm going to guess a lot of people wouldn't. I, I'd have to seriously consider it. I love Pinto. I love these guys. And when I do these deals, I, people say, well, I don't really want to give up that. Well, that tells me that it might be somebody you have to give up. To get a Debrinca, you're gonna, you can't just look at your roster and go, well, I don't like Chris Tierney so they can have them. Well, they don't like Chris Tierney either. They're not stupid. <laughs> you know, Adam Godet is not going to move the meter to get a Dabrinka, you're going to have to give up solid, solid players. Good, good players. And people will say, well, Pinto, you know, he could be as good as Dabrinka one day. No, he can't. Pinto is not going to be that. You're overvaluing your players. He's good. He's solid. He's going to be a, a good second, third, possibly center. But is he going to be a possible, you know, already scored 41 goals on a bad team yet in Chicago? Dude, I mean, come on. It's going to cost a lot. Cause ch and Chicago doesn't even have to trade him. They don't have to. You're going to have to rip it from him. They're putting him out there saying, what do you got? What are you willing to give? But trust me, it's going to be a lot. A lot, a lot. Next, New Jersey. New Jersey is also talking about trading their first. Their second overall, which is why I'm putting it in this deal. This is the most likely place, I think, if Dabrinkat's available, that I think they could go because they have the second overall pick. That's different than the seventh of Ottawa's. That second pick, Sharon Govich, not Sharon Govich, uh, that's who they already have. The, that second round pick is going to be an absolutely phenomenal player, and I, for some reason, I just remo forgot the who that was on the second line is not Sharon Govich. But they need – how many times I'm in the New Jersey talking in the Facebook groups and stuff like that, listening to – reading articles and everything, and they don't – they need a score. They need a score. Now, just for Brad is a really good one, but I don't think he's an absolutely fantastic – like – he could be a 40-goal scorer. Don't get me wrong. Do I think he's to brink out level? No, I don't. I don't think he's to brink out level. Um, and I do think that it's very 2021. It's bugging me that I can't remember his name. Slavkovsky. Yuri Slavkovsky. Or Logan Cooley. New Jersey doesn't need a Logan Cooley. They've got already smallish Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes. They don't need a Logan Cooley. Uh, Sharon Govich, maybe not a high on a lot of people's list and maybe on, not on New Jersey's list. He's got some weaknesses. I th and also, I don't think they want to wait around anymore. New Jersey has been building for a while. Uh, things are get, seeming to get impatient in New Jersey. They, last year, they picked up 
Ryan Graves, you know, Dougie Hamilton, they gave him $9 million a year. They didn't give Dougie Hamilton $9 million a year so they could be a contender when he's 32. They believe they're on the cusp of having a fantastic team here in New Jersey. So here's my offer, and this could do it. I'm hearing that they're having a terrible time working out a contract with Pavel Zaka. Terrible time. And it's he he's big, but he doesn't play big. He doesn't play like a very big player. And that's been kind of the problem. They've been waffling on whether they should keep him or not keep him. They really wanted him to be a center. He didn't work out up the middle. He's been playing left wing. It just seems to be like there's a disconnect there. So you're first overall, and Pavel Zaka, and you get yourself a 40-goal score with a potential to score 50, who fits right in the wheelhouse of their 24, 25-year-old mold of players that they have. Imagine a, the line of Debrinkat, Hughes, and Brat. I know it's on the small side, but if you can catch them, I mean, Debrinkat can score from anywhere. And Jesper Brat, his speed, this would be one of the fastest lines in the NHL. Without a doubt. You could put Sharon Govich down with Heischer and Mercer, and you got a bigger shutdown type line. And then, you know, Jesper Boquist had a coming out last year. He looked not too bad. Uh, Kalkinen kind of took a step back. Probably keep Tatar around. Miles Wood should be healthy now. He needs a bit of a contract there. But I honestly could see New Jersey doing something like that. And I think Chicago would be very interested in the second overall. And a guy like Pavel Zaka, they'd give him a shot. They got time. They're rebuilding. They got all the time in the world. Right? If they think, if they even if they think Slavkovsky, who is a six foot four, two hundred and twenty-five pound winger, can have anywhere near the offense of Debrinka, they might make this deal. I think they could possibly make this deal. Finally. So tell me, New Jersey fans, what do you think? Would you do a deal like that at all? Finally, I'm just going to do this quick because I did the JT Miller video the last time. This would be a three-way deal to the Vancouver Canucks. And it would be Dabrinka to the Vancouver Canucks for JT Miller and Connor Garland. Then Chicago would take JT Miller. And you, I want you to go look over at my JT Miller trade deals and see what... Chicago could get for JT Miller. They keep Connor Garland, and Vancouver gets an electric 40 to 50 goal scorer to play with Bo Horvat. Elias Peterson moves down, moves into the middle again instead of playing on the wing. I don't like him on the wing there. Why? He's a great sentiment. Especially if he can pass to if he he and Debrinkat shooting all over the place. How are you gonna stop that? Holy crap. That would be insane. Seriously, it would be, and then put Paul Pod Colson on the left side. What an amazing line that would be. Yeah, you lose JT Miller and you lose Connor Garland in this deal. In this deal, actually, I think Chicago would probably have to give something back as well. They would probably have to a little bit go Vancouver's way as well. And Vancouver wouldn't have to give up their first. It would just be that deal. Chicago gives something back to even it up a little bit. And then they trade JT Miller for whatever they have. But I don't know. I just had this feeling that Vancouver would be pretty happy with a guy that's 24 years old and can shoot out the lights like the Brinkat. What do you guys think down there in the comment section? And all of you, everybody, please comment and tell me what you think about all of this. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Enjoy the future trade videos, free agent videos, and draft videos that we're going to do here at the NHL Pro Wisdom Show. Have a great day, everybody. Say bye.